Hey, what's up? It's Jake, and we're going to go over the Terraform Cloud uh, kind of options in the UI. Um, so let's take a look at what I've got here. So I have a Terraform workspace called Terraform, and um, we're just going to kind of take a look around a little bit. So you're going to see a Runs tab, and the Runs is just a, uh, a log of all the times that um, you've run uh, like a Terraform apply and and uh, just gives you a, give you a nice chronological record of of what kind of changes have taken place so you have some kind of um, you know like a log just for audit history you've got states here which will give you the history of your state of your infrastructure so you can go look in and see you know, what was changed you can look in the code but you can also go back and look at state if I click one here and you can see exactly um, what it is it was doing, which is kind of nice, and what changes were, uh, were in this version. So this is what was all the same, right? And then it'll show you if anything changed, like the serialization. Um, and then you've got your variables tab, uh, where you can configure your variables, environment variables, settings, uh, general, you know, gives you uh, the ability to do apply methods, your Terraform version, your working directory. So if in this repo you have a different directory you want to work out of, you can do that one and create a separate workspace for each directory, which is kind of nice. Um, if you have separate workspaces in a single repo, uh, you can do console UI, structured run output, you can share your state globally, uh, remote and local execution, stuff like that. And then you've got your locking. Um, you can lock this. There's also a little icon right here. That tells you if it's locked. Um, if it's locked, um, you can you can lock this. So if somebody tries to run something, it won't actually run. So it's one nice thing if you if you want to prevent changes from taking place, you can lock uh, lock a workspace, which is kind of cool. Um, this actions menu here, you can start a new plan if you want to just start running a Terraform plan now, um, or you can just do the locked workspace from there. Um, in the overview, like you said, it always showed the latest run, your resources, your outputs. You can set up a README, all that stuff. You have this nice little sidebar here. It shows you which Git repo. If I click on it, it'll go ahead and take you to that repo, um, which is super handy. Which working directory you're out of, all that stuff. Um, and then exactly what your settings are right here. And then the metrics is kind of nice. If you want to know, well, how long does it take to do this? You know. You can set up triggers, you can have your contributors, you can add tags to the workspace, all that stuff, uh, which is very nice. Um, the variables, uh, again, kind of don't really use that very much, but it's kind of self-explanatory, so you can use that. We talked about that. Um, but there is a, um, a speculative plan thing that you can set up. So um, some of the runs that you do, um, you can run speculative plans. So you can do, like, let's say you do a st you start a new plan. You can do just a regular plan, or you can do a refresh only. Um, a speculative plan would kind of like wait for a merge on the PR to do that. Temporary doesn't really show up in the logs. Um, it's just some things you can do with that individual to like a direct link um, or non-destructive where nothing's actually provisioned. Um, so if you want to check that out under settings, we've got this uh, version control set uh, option here. And this is where you can kind of look at uh, automatic speculative plans and you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's the update uh, VCS. This is your version control system. So uh, that that's where you would do that. Um, if you work on a team that maintains infra and you need to develop like or modify config files, um, you can edit the configuration. So um, you do the same thing as you're doing like your other code, um, open a PR or whatever, but you can Terraform can pull the config files from the source of truth. So if you've got a forked repo, you can add a branch. Um, adds additional tags to your EC2 instance and be able to tag them like that, um, which is kind of nice. Again, and there's tags and stuff like that, that you can use. Um, just so some of the config stuff you can do, distribution tags uh, for like operating systems or, you know, 
merge a lot of a lot of branching strategy stuff so i think really the branching strategies uh are the best use case in my opinion for for tags um and that's pretty much it so as far as the ui goes that's pretty much everything but uh i think at this point we kind of went over like uh the basics of terraform cloud i showed a separate system on doing auto apply and how that works with git seeing that work in action um and then just kind of the general like layout, the overview, all the tabs, the settings, all that stuff. Um, you've also got notifications you can set up, SSH keys, um, destruction and delete. Uh, if you were to do a Terraform destroy, you do that here and you can just manually destroy stuff here, um, which is a, akin to running this command basically. Um, you can also not allow this. So that's kind of nice. And then this is also where you would d delete this workspace if you didn't need it anymore or wanted to move on to something else or if you're just playing around or something. So anyways, that is, uh, that's it. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But if not, then I'll go ahead and move on to the next one.